restricting my throat. I take my guitar. His expression changed in the next instant, realizing there was another woman he cared for in danger. I was not, and could not, be too scared to oblige his any request, as the NYPD cuffed him. I made the quickest work I could of disconnecting the strap and pulling it around his neck, fully expecting the police to end any attempts to help my friend. They didn't. Honestly, I think only because they were too distracted by the dozens of others they trapped on that corner. Take my phone out of my pocket, he instructed next. And, again, as quickly and dexterously as I could, I pulled his phone out of his left pocket. I backed against the gated building, clutching the guitar. Do you want to be arrested? Officer One asked me. I shook my head, terrified, the tears crowding the edges of my eyelids since I first called out, Matt, when they spun him round. You want to be arrested, Matt? No. The words struggled through my vocal cords and escaped in a high pitch. Then you need to leave, Officer One commanded. Clutching the guitar like a life preserver, knowing I'd lost Matt and trying now to save myself, I edged away from the crowd. So distraught and disoriented, I didn't realize we remained surrounded on all sides by the NYPD. Directly in front of me was a line of scooters. What are you doing? Officer 2 interrogated. They said I could go. I don't know how. I don't know what to do. I still clutched the guitar by the neck as though I were a child. The tears still clung. Maybe it's because I couldn't let them see me cry. Get back over there. I obeyed. Start letting them out on opposite sides, Officer 3 said, one at a time. I edged toward the tiny opening made between the scooters and the building wall, where it looked they were allowing people out. Officer 4 grabbed my arm and pulled me back. Where do you think you're going, she questioned. They said I could go. Officer 5 interjected. The chief said we could let them go. With a look of exasperation and, perhaps, disappointment, Officer 4 let go of my arm. We waited in single file to be released from the kettle. I shook with wonder if I would escape. The guitar still clutched. The, clear, the tears still clung. When finally I walked free into the sidewalk, the tears could not stay in me any longer. They burst forth with such a torrent I was blinded by them. I didn't expect anyone to put their arms around me. I didn't expect anyone to help me or ask my name. But Lauren and Cindy did. Fellow occupiers who lost loved ones as well. They held me as I cried, saying it would be okay. They took me to the National Lawyers Guild to find legal aid for Matt, 